Hi, this is Greg and Paul, and welcome to our eighth LEGO News, Views and Reviews Roundup for the month of February. Now, this month saw LEGO lighting up controversy over their new Night Mode add-on kits and gambling away one of their rarest DC figures. And we get new sets announced from Minions to Mandalorians and a new collectible minifigure series to a great big Venomosaurus. Now, more on all that later in this bumper-packed edition. Whilst here at London Bridge Bricks, we've been busy bees building Minecraft sets, reviewing ice cream trucks and Lego magazines, as well as streaming with our friends. This is the LBB News. Here we go. We'll kick off the new month with a trip across London to King's Cross, venturing to the House of Dots, a collaboration between artist Camille Walala and Lego for the launch of their new crafty, colourful theme, Dots. So what is the House of Dots? Well, it's a place where colour pattern and creation are positively inescapable. No, this isn't some fancy escape room. It's an interactive art installation created by Lego Dots and Malala's distinctive patterns and colours as a way to introduce the world to Lego's new theme. Now, build as the new canvas for endless creativity. Cue the marketing hashtag Dot Your World. Now, my perception of this installation was that it was going to be like the majority of art galleries here in London, where you wander around admiring the views. However, this experience was miles more creative and interactive than that. So after a short wait, we were ushered into the first room, the lounge, where we were briefed by the entertaining LEGO team as to where and why this construction came to be, and some details around LEGO dots, and because of her style of art and why LEGO wanted to partner specifically with Camille. They also talked us through some fun facts about the project, including its construction from eight shipping containers, two million dots, 800 plus working hours, 150 square meters of patterns made by 180 local children, and a whole bunch of AFOLs to help create the house interior, including some from my local lug here in London. A little bit more on that later. The lounge was full of Lego eye candy. There were sofas made of Lego with checkered patterns and plant pots with bold outlining and huge mirrors with thousands of tiny Lego tiles making up the patterns around the frame. Dressers displaying the new Lego dot photo holder range and a six foot blue Constantina screen dividing up the room. There was a brilliant patterned picture with squares and rectangles and giant dots and diagonal lines. And even the lampshades had depth and texture to them. And you really had to walk around the room several times just to take it all in and fully appreciate it. And from that room, we were led into the House of Dots answer to an open plan kitchen with a long table with stacks of Lego dot items. And with no encouragement at all, kids and adults sat down and started getting creative. Now we were told that the idea of dots is to keep experimenting over and over and over again, and that there is really no wrong. The kitchen was decorated with bright, solid, bold colors with huge cutout shapes on the feature wall representing Lego elements. And this room had a lot of mosaics situated around it with large sections of it just being white. And that might sound a little bit bland, but actually when put all together, that looked fantastic. The kitchen work surface was one long black and white geometric pattern. Then after a while, we were led out and given our House of Dots packs consisting of a trendy tie bag and a half pots to put our Lego pieces. Now this was where we learned that what we built, we could actually keep. Very cool. Then we were led out and upwards to the bedroom. Now the layout was different, but the objective was the same. Take a look around, feed back your thoughts on the Lego Dot products, mess around, play and be creative, and of course, fill those Lego pots. The penultimate room, the bathroom, was my favourite room with those symmetrical black and white lines whizzing around the room, which I thought was insanely fabulous. And there was a large sink with an oversized tap, but the most fun thing about this was a bath full of hundreds of pink balls. And naturally, I couldn't help but take a dip. Then straight out of the bath and into the House of Dots disco. Now, this so-called house was unique in so many ways, but the most far out idea had to be the private disco. This dark room with its funky music, mirrored walls and large neon green round by one quarters, circles and squares was a different experience altogether. It was almost disorientating, but I liked the vibe that it created. Then it was out of the disco and down an eight foot slide, which I think all homes should have. And they say that Lego and Malala are the perfect match. Dots is all about colour and patterns and that's clearly evident with Camille's art. The collaboration wasn't simply obvious, it was always going to be inevitable and between them, they pulled off an inviting space full of inspiration, self-expression and creativity for kids and of course adults. One of my Lego YouTuber friends and a member of my local London AFOLS lab is Kaz from Blockhead UK. Now, she volunteered to help work on the vibrant art installation mashup and from her experience she's created a couple of behind the scenes videos. So please do check those out and the rest of her YouTube channel. She really is the number one place to go to for microscale building. 
and you'll find her details in the description below. Lego's new theme launches on March the 1st. Head on over to Lego's website to see what it's all about and find out why people are getting excited about all those new printed elements. Coming up, Dick Van Dyke and Elon Musk make it into the Lego Ideas platform for the second month in a row. And we get official pictures of the Lego Star Wars Mandalorian and Child Brickheads and a Razor Crest that looks rather good. And if you like what we're doing here on the LBB News and you want to see more of it, Click on that subscribe button and tap that bell icon so you get notifications as to when we release new content. Okay, so let's take a look at February's LEGO Ideas news. Now, for those out there that are new to LEGO Ideas, in a nutshell, it's LEGO sets designed by fans for fans of LEGO. Unraveling that a little further, it's a platform for creative LEGO fans to submit and present their projects and have them voted upon by other LEGO fans with the hope of achieving the coveted 10,000 support threshold. Then from that stage, their project goes through to review by a LEGO Ideas panelist and via various variables, they then decide on whether that or any number of projects get made into official LEGO sets. And after all that, those lucky enough to have been chosen then get given the Lego designer makeover and goes into development until it's deemed ready to be manufactured. And during this part of the LBB news, we discuss what new projects and sets have achieved that 10,000 threshold. Starting this month with a bang, and it's the awesome project that I've been following for quite some time now. It is of course the UCS Chitty Chitty Bang Bang designed and built by Norders. Now this project proves that if at first you don't succeed, then keep trying and you will. Now, this is Norda's second shot at recreating the magical Chitty Chitty Bang Bang based on the 1968 musical adventure film starring none other than that man again, Dick Van Dyke. And after a major overhaul, deservingly, he's now achieved that 10k of support. Roughly speaking, this proposal was submitted a year ago. And using digital images created in studio, Norda's then created a real Chitty and developed the model even further with regular updates. And in his extensive notes, he goes on to say, Another deviance from the regular Lego that you'll have noticed is Chitty's heavy use of shiny brass and metal parts. Now since I want this to be a great version of the actual Chitty car, and I'm going to keep it as a displaced model regardless of what happens, I decided to go with third party chrome parts. I wouldn't expect Lego to do this as it's quite expensive, although they have produced chrome parts before. The chrome gold parts were made using real Lego parts coated by a third party vendor on Bricklink and Brickout. Now I have to say that those look great, especially the running lights. Norda doesn't just stick to using unofficial chrome pieces in his updates, he also shows LEGO's alternative colours for the bonnet. So firstly, as we said, he shows it in the shiny chrome and then presents it using warm gold and silver satin finishes. And lastly, in a more regular flattened colour, choosing light bluish grey and a dark mustard yellow. Now all three finishes are good, but for different reasons. And if this project was to go on and be made, I feel that the satin colours hit that sweet spot for being practical for LEGO to produce, yet still staying true to the original source material. And one of the great things about covering and detailing the ideas news is finding out about clever building techniques, and all his chitty design comes in abundance of them. Leading up to the bonnet, it shows how he uses flexible hoses and 1x1 plates with clips to create the curved cowling effect and those 1x2 grilled pieces to get the wicker effect for the picnic basket. Now Norders really goes into detail with lots of other sections of the build and if you check back at his updates area on his LEGO Ideas page, you'll certainly find some chrome nuggets of building techniques there. And details for that can be found in the description below. Well done to Norders for sticking with his idea and resubmitting an even better improved version of his UCS Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. His idea certainly has lots of appeal and I really hope that this one goes all the way and one day ends up on the shelves because it would certainly be a great addition to my ever-growing Lego car collection. And from one mode of transport to another, and this one's a beauty, the train station Studgate by the super talented Bricky Brick. This eye-catching centerpiece that would look great in anyone's Lego city is thoughtful and so well detailed it's on the verge of being on the Lego ideas limit of 3,000 pieces. The first thing you're drawn to is the giant glazed dome housed on the station's roof terrace in the centre of this gorgeous 19th century concept station. Now around the dome you have lookout posts for minifigures to admire the Lego city views, then at either end of the terrace you have a seating area to enjoy the ice creams behind those clock towers. Now protecting the interior of the station from the weather, you have more glazing running along a massive mansard style roof. 
Then away from the roof and down a flight of steps takes you to the station's bridge that connects both sides of the platforms. Now one side of those steps takes you onto the first floor terrace with more seating spots and another ornate clock face to the centre and old fashioned tungsten lamp posts flanking either side. Continuing down steps brings you out at ground level with posts running along the pavement supporting the first floor terrace and steps and ramps leading up to and onto the Studgate platform. For even more playability, Bricker Brick has also included a two carriage electric style train with detachable roofs so you can pop your minifigures in. Now this set has a great chance of making it through and do check out Bricky Brick's Lego Ideas page where you see an absolute train load of other great ideas from him simmering away and gathering support. And not too long from now, we should be finding out when his Pirate Bay set will be hitting the Lego store shelves as a new Lego Ideas set to purchase. A link to Bricky Brick's Lego Ideas page as well as all the other projects that we mention in this edition of the LBB News can be found in the description below. Next up, we have a tiny Lego Ideas project that flew straight in to achieve the 10k of support, uniquely called Untitled Goose Game by a fellow player. So the project is based on the Australian indie game from House House that was a hit with gamers during last year. The idea behind the game is that you're a goose located in a very traditional English village and using your wits and abilities to manipulate objects around you and non-player characters in order to complete the game's objectives to progress. Now it's a fun and stealthy strategy game and I really like those stripped down graphics. And if you want to play it, you can do so using the Windows, Mac, Nintendo, Switch, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One platforms. Now enough of its backstory, back to a fellow games project. His vignette is built upon a 16 by 16 plate and it really well depicts an English looking garden. Something of course us here in London would know all about. Though I have to be honest, this style of garden could probably feature anywhere in Europe. With it, we get a brick wall, along with gates and hedges surrounding the garden that also comes with a vegetable patch with foliage and an ominous snow geese allowed sign hammered into the middle of it. Inside the garden shed, you'll find all sorts of tools and boxes, great hiding places for our hero goose to jump out from. It's a simple polished looking idea made employing the studs not on show technique, but it captures the essence of the game perfectly. And I'll be interested to see how this idea from a fellow player does. It's perhaps too simple, but the LEGO Ideas team will have to make note of how quickly this idea rocketed to the 10k club. But also, and in all honesty, there isn't a lot to develop. Now, unless of course LEGO wanted to expand upon that idea and include other parts of the village that feature within the game. Let us know in the comments below your thoughts on this idea. Is it complex enough? Does that even matter when it comes to the LEGO Ideas theme? And if you wanted a well-known video game to cross over and be made into a LEGO set, what would you choose? And while you're there, give us a thumbs up and click that subscribe button. Moving away from geese now and over to Falcons where we have another Elon Musk inspired ideas project that blasted all the way to the Lego ideas planning of the 10k club with the Saturn V scale SpaceX Falcon 9 from Lego Aviator. Now, just like the real thing, this Lego Ideas project comes with a separable second stage, uh, deployable grid fins and landing legs with removable struts so that you can display your model ready for liftoff or how it looks once Section 1 has returned back to Earth one day to be reused again. And not forgetting arguably the most important section, the Dragon spacecraft itself. Now, Lego Aviator says in his description, Falcon 9 is a two-stage rocket design and manufactured by Elon Musk's SpaceX for the reliable and safe transport of satellites and the Dragon spacecraft into orbit. Now, Falcon 9 is the first orbital class rocket capable of reflight and is a historic new step in humanity's quest to explore the solar system. His Lego idea has the added incentive of buying three Falcons, because if you do, then you will be able to create the colossal Falcon heavyweight variant. Now, by design, the Falcon would look great standing next to the modern day Lego classic Saturn V and perhaps the more recent Lego idea set number 21321, the International Space Station. Elon Musk's Falcon 9 is the cutting edge of rocket development and Lego Aviator's idea would be a welcome addition for all those Lego space fans out there. Away from cutting edge spacecraft to pretty much where the human adventure into space began with our next Lego Ideas project that made it through to 10,000 support midway through February. It's the minifig scale Project Gemini by Stephen Howard 27. This conical shaped spacecraft is a special piece of NASA history and comes with four sections that assemble to create a very nice display piece perched on a smart looking Technic and Lego brick stand. 
All four sections through the craft are nicely constructed, from the thrusters that are cleverly angled using internal pin connectors, forks, tow bars and sturdy ball joints to achieve that cone shape, to the retro rockets section through the all-important re-entry module and cockpit. And then you have the outer skin of the hull finished with those smooth white slopes. And in case you wondered why this NASA spacecraft is called Gemini, well, it's because it flew two crew members. And of course, Stephen's project comes with two astronaut minifigures. One depicted Edward White, the first American to ever perform a spacewalk. Stephen says in his description, the minifig scale Project Gemini would be a great addition to the existing Lego NASA models and a great model for any space enthusiast. And here at London Bridge Bricks, we agree and think that this could be one to watch out for come the Lego idea selection. From real world spaceships to sci-fi spacecraft and a project that we've been watching gather support in the Lego Ideas arena. Now it's based on the British comedy sci-fi show Red Dwarf and Lego fan designer Bob's Vintage Bricks has come up with the Red Dwarf Starbug Lego idea based on the TV show. It captures the Starbug with its three perfectly formed Lego spheres and the smallest at the front housing the cockpit and the middle thorax section being the crew quarters and the largest house in the engines with those giant thrusters and the landing gear really do make it look, well, like a Starbug. Bob's idea comes with the show's five main characters in brilliant looking minifigure form, including Nista, Rimmer, and of course, the wild and funky cat. Now, good luck to Bob on his quest to get to the 10K club. Right now, he's not far off halfway. Now, it's definitely worth checking his idea out and we'll post a link down in the description below. Back to the 50s and 60s now, and our last idea to make it to the 10K Club is the Retro Bowling Alley by Astronaut Avila. Now, they took their inspiration from the modular downtown Dyna set number 10620. Now, starting on the exterior, we have a giant classic American sign with Dave's Bowl and Cafe inscribed on it, and then there are these 2x2 two two posters running on the wall with colourful flower beds planted underneath them, leading you straight to the entrance with two giant skittles either side and a welcome sign posted overhead. Now, all that detail really does set the tone for what you'll find inside. The detailed roof with its extractor vents and grills lifts off, revealing four retro colored alleys. Now, the choice of colors is spot on, and I can definitely see this build being placed in the vicinity of the downtown diner. It just oozes America's 50s and 60s era. Everything inside is smoothed and the tilt sofas look like nice mini builds. Now behind those, you'll find the counter with cash machines and adjacent to that, you'll find the gumball machine. Now to the back of the building, there's a kitchen diner area for people to enjoy their burgers and pizzas freshly baked from a well kitted out kitchen. Astronaut Avila's idea comes with six minifigures. A chef sporting mustard and ketchup stains, two bowling staff, a young male and a young female wearing a Fabuland top with lime rays, and a young kid in a classic Lego space torso. It's a different sort of idea and one that would complement fans of Lego who have cities and collect modular buildings. And on that note, best of luck to Astronaut Avila for the review stage. Now let us know your thoughts on the retro bowling alley product idea and all those others that we mentioned down in the comments below. Sticking around the Lego ideas platform for a little bit longer and we've got a few more stories to share with you. Firstly, at the beginning of last month, we got the announcement of the Ultimate Collector Series Star Wars set that's destined to be made on the back of last month's reported LEGO fan vote. In at number three, and we had the Tide Bomber, no real surprise there. Then at number two, we had the Nebulum B Escort Frigate, leaving the number one spot and winner to the Republic Gunship, which I was really happy to hear, as we mentioned last month, this is the one that we voted on. That said, I would have been happy with the Frigate as well. Perhaps though, when this particular UCS set does arrive on our shelves, we'll get a smaller version of the frigate, just like we did with the recent Hoth and Endor dioramas. As to when this set will be made for sure, well, it's not going to be this year. As it's rumoured, it could actually be an ATAT, so fingers crossed for that. However, LEGO Ideas did say at the bottom of the announcement that we'll be revealing more information next year onwards, so stick around. So roll on 2021 for you gunship gang members. Let us know in the comments below your thoughts on the TIE Bomber, Nibbling Frigate and Gunship. Was you happy with the result or would you rather have seen the Frigate win the fan vote? And what UCS set would you like to see coming out this year? More results now and this time from the LEGO Ideas projects. Now, over the last four months, the LEGO Review Board have been evaluating the 10 product ideas that reached 10,000 support between last May and September. Now, those were the UCS Space Shuttle, Thunderbirds Are Go, The Pursuit of Flight, 
History Museum, The Office, Medieval Blacksmith, Winnie the Pooh, NASA Spacecraft, The Haunted Mansion, 50th Anniversary, The Seven Dwarfs House, and of course, the continued consideration of Anatomy Mini. During the streaming of the live results, presented by LEGO Ideas Engagement Manager Hassan Jensen and LEGO Ideas Design Manager Samuel Johnson, they spoke about the process of evaluating each of the product ideas, and at the review board, look at build quality and feasibility, for example, can they even do it, playability, and how well does it display? And does it fit the LEGO brand? They continue saying that they have to consider licensing questions, and interestingly, they said that they have to factor in LEGO products that are currently in development elsewhere within the LEGO system, just in case that there's a clash of products. Even other factors like market demand, manufacturing capacity, and even things like stability have to go in and be considered. Or as I put it, at the top of the idea slot, they have to factor in various variables. So you do get a sense that each and every LEGO Ideas project that makes it to the coveted 10,000 support still have a lot of hoops to jump through and a little luck needed along the way. All the ideas in this round were excellent and during the stream there were two ideas picked to be approved and become a real LEGO product. The first being the Medieval Blacksmith by Nemi Rob, and this is a really nice design of a really old building. It makes good use of different color bricks giving it lots of textures and detail to the model and it's going to be a really nice display piece. The second one picked being Winnie the Pooh by Ben Louisa. Now it's a smaller detailed design and full of fun colourful characters, including of course the lovable Pooh Bear. It's a nostalgic idea and one that a lot of people will be able to connect back to with their childhoods. And I'll be looking forward to seeing what those minifigures will look like when it's finally finished. Disappointingly, Stefan X's ambitious Annette Mini design wasn't selected but I get the impression that it was a hard decision for the LEGO Ideas panel to make having explored all avenues. But congratulations to Nami Rob and Ben Louisa. They made it through a tough group with lots of great ideas. And it's going to be interesting to see what their LEGO Ideas projects look like after the LEGO designers have finished adding their touch of expertise to their designs. Of course, more will be revealed about that nearer to their launch dates. Let us know in the comments below your thoughts on the two designs picked. Would you have liked to have seen the Pursuit of Flight go through? Or perhaps should LEGO have finally picked The Office? And by the way, if you like what we're doing here at the LBB News, why not stick around and hit that subscribe button and check the bell notifications so that you know when we send out new content. So after all that LEGO Ideas news, it's finally time for something completely different. With genuine news now, and one of the biggest stories that came out earlier this month was when LEGO lit up the brick world when pictures started surfacing on social media waves of the new line of LEGO brick products called Night Mode appearing at the LEGO World Copenhagen show. This add-on sub-theme of light kits have currently been made just for four sets across different themes. Now this includes the LEGO Ideas Treehouse, LEGO Creator Downtown Diner, LEGO Harry Potter's Hogwarts Castle, and one of my favourite LEGO sets, the Creator Ford Mustang. Now each light kit comes with a number of LED lights as well as expansion boards, and the largest of these being for the Harry Potter Hogwarts Castle, which features 74 LED lights and 11 expansion boards. However, the buzz for these kits was a tad short-lived, because for the moment, it turns out that the night mode kits aren't actually available, and it's nothing more than conceptual, and the boxes and lighting kits shown are merely prototypes. In other words, LEGO is undertaking market research at the show, under its innovative incubator arm, the Lead User Lab. So what does it mean in the current market? Well, LEGO collectors wouldn't need to rely on third-party companies to light up their official LEGO sets and custom box. These add-on kits, though I sense, will not be cheap and ramp up the price of a particular LEGO set, which you would potentially would have to factor in when buying the overall primary LEGO set itself. And what about the smaller third-party companies that manufacture these lighting kits already? What will they be thinking and how will they respond to this change occurring in the market space? With those thoughts in mind, LEGO's market research has run aground with some controversy. Now, Brickstuff, who is a major player in the arena of third-party lighting bricks since 2011 and who currently actually sells over 100 lighting products, has come out accusing LEGO of subcontracting to a copycat competitor. In a statement from Brickstuff, they said, Many have asked why we didn't paint our ideas. Since the beginning, we have worked with an intellectual property law firm on these discussions, who knew that patents typically cost $10,000 each to file, take up to three years to issue, and are typically valid only for one country. Now, we currently sell more than 100 products on our website, and our business today is global. We've always considered it better to invest in amazing new products than to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars that we didn't have on lawyers. Today, the market for LEGO lighting products is huge and our designs have unintentionally become a global standard. 
Now, some estimates have put the potential market size for LEGO lighting between $60 and $75 million annually. LEGO responded promptly with a statement of their own. We've also been engaging with many lead users that do lights for finding potential pilot candidates. We have had dialogues with quite a lot of them. We continue to evaluate how to best engage in a potential pilot. I want to reassure everyone here that in the lead user lab, we have the very best intentions when it comes to collaborating. We'll try to have a close dialogue with Robert Brickstuff and solve any potential misunderstandings. So perhaps LEGO have made a genuine mistake and not looked deep enough into the many factors of dipping their toes into a buoyant LEGO brick lighting market. Now, Brickstuff have, after all, in their own words, invested tens of thousands of dollars into the development of wiring and connecting plug standards and evaluated hundreds of potential parts. Now, this all takes a lot of time, money and effort. And as you can understand how they feel given the situation. And this trepidation is, of course, fueled by Lego's recent acquisition of Bricklink, which has brought about changes into the second hand and custom Lego market. In defense to LEGO, they have been quick to respond and try and limit the damage of the controversy with Night Mode for what is a much wished for fun enhancement to their range of products. Now, this is certainly a gray area and one in which it's going to be tricky for LEGO and brick stuff to navigate. But it feels to me that LEGO just needs to get some things in order before they move into the piloting phase of Night Mode and tie up a lot of loose ends with brick stuff and clear the air who, after all, have been illuminating bricks for nearly 10 years and helped carve out this market. Now, we'll keep you posted as this and related stories unfold with updates on our Instagram and Twitter, as well as all the other latest news from us and around the wibbly-wobbly world of LEGO. And if you happen to be interested to see Brickstuff stuff, a link to their website can be found in the description below. Let us know in the comments below, what do you think about this move from LEGO? Was it a genuine mistake? Or do you feel that they don't have anything to even answer to? Have they been too quick to try and be innovative and instead come across a little bit sloppy? How keen are you to illuminate your bricks and what set of yours would you add that lighting brick touch to? Let us know your thoughts and feelings and get that conversation started. Since its incarnation, the LEGO VIP rewards road has been a bumpy one. At best, it's cumbersome to navigate and use. And since launch day, LEGO have been on the back foot to fix a system that in all essence was never really broken. During February, they came up with an exciting but slightly contentious promotion to rejuvenate the LEGO loyalty point system in the form of a globalish sweepstake to win an exclusive Shazam DC superhero minifigure that was only available eight years ago at San Diego's 2012 Comic Con via a raffle. To enter, you log into your LEGO.com account and enter the VIP portal, find the sweepstake and decide how many points that you want to gamble with a chance of winning this rare figure. Now you can use anywhere from a single entry worth 50 points right up to 15 entries that works out to 750 points. Now that's just under five UK pounds, which on the face of it is okay. But on the flip side, to accumulate that many points, you have to spend close to 100 pounds. But to flip that back again, this figure is currently sitting on eBay and Bricklink for an eye-watering 400 pounds. Holy moly. But there is no getting away that LEGO have created this rare LEGO minifigure market and are leveraging it for you to part with those hard-earned VIP points and gamble them away instead of using them towards an actual set. Not the most responsible action that LEGO has ever taken in my opinion. That said, Shazam aka Captain Marvel happens to be my favourite DC superhero and I couldn't resist entering for a chance to win. And let's face it, you've got to be in it to win it. All entries have to be in by the 2nd of March when the winner will soon be announced. Let us know in the comments below your thoughts on LEGO's VRP point system and do you think it's okay to have sweepstakes to win rare LEGO and potentially encouraging gambling? And what other rare figures would you like to have a chance to win? And while you're there, if you happen to have just found us and you're enjoying our news coverage, why don't you tap that subscribe button? This year marks the 10th anniversary of the LEGO minifigure series. In February, we started to see pictures coming out of the New York Toy Fair from Andre from the German LEGO site Zusungebot, which roughly translates in English to assembled. There are 16 figures in all, and the reception from the LEGO community has been okay. But it's early days, and at this point of editing the LBB news, we've still not had any official pictures. Now, from our live streams and joining with others, most people seem to mostly like the drone pilot, the llama costume girl, pinata boy, sleepy girl, but my two favourites at the moment anyway is the Red Ranger and the Pea Costume Girl. The other minifigures from the series is the 10th anniversary Green Brick Guy. Now he's the same as the collectible minifigures from series 18's Red Chap, except this one is holding a 10th anniversary tile. 
And we also get an electronic musician, a rocket girl, a nunchuck, a fighter, a field athlete, a diver, a pirate, a viking, a hip hop girl, and last of all, we get ourselves a knight. This new wave will be out in April. Let us know your thoughts on the new range of collectible minifigures in the comments below. Do you like them? And how do you feel they compare to the DC collectible series that we got from last time around? And have you collected all the series over the past 10 years? Next, and we have more news from the New York Toy Fair show, and again from Zusungabort, who were one of the first to get videos and photos out of the new buildable droid Dio, who starred in the last Star Wars movie, The Rise of Skywalker, and is set number 75278. Dio follows in the same tracks as R2-D2 and BB-8 and looks like he'll be a lot of fun to build and comes with 519 pieces. He comes with a stand along with a UCS style information plaque and a mini droid version of himself and will probably retail in the UK for around £59. As and when we get official photos of him, you'll be the first to know. And with that in mind, please do follow us on Twitter and Instagram and you'll find details of those down in the description below where you'll also find links to the German YouTube and Lego website Zusungabur. And finally, our last story revolves around the Mandalorian and three short pieces of news to update you with. Now firstly, the new season of the show will be hitting the Disney Plus airwaves in October, which by then, most of the world will have access to Disney Plus. Here in the UK, we'll be getting it during mid-March, and I'll be cracking into the final and seventh season of The Clone Wars. Secondly, Amazon Canada revealed that we'll be getting a Brickheads version of The Mandalorian and Baby Yoda, aka The Child. And it's set number 75317 and comes with 295 pieces and will retail here in the UK for £17.99. Both The Mandalorian and Baby Yoda in his hovering cot look great and will be a must-buy for Star Wars and Brickhead fans alike. We'll certainly be getting it, so watch this space. This set is available from the 1st of August and can be pre-ordered from lego.com. Lastly, and arguably the most exciting Mandalorian news to come out of February, was the announcement that the Razor Crest is coming out in September. Now it's set number 75292 and comes with 1,023 pieces, and will be retailing here in the UK for £120. The set comes with five minifigures, the Mandalorian himself, the same one that came with the recent ATST, Grieve Karga, a Scout Trooper, and the much anticipated Child Yoda figure, who comes in a cute baby factor minifigure form. And we also get an IG-11. The Razor Crest comes with a dual cockpit for the Mando and Baby Yoda flanked by two spring-loaded shooters. We also get a cargo holder with sides that open out and a ramp leading up into a carbonite area of the ship and a detachable escape pod. Now the size of the construction reminds me of the 20th anniversary Slave 1, where the ship is constructed around a Technic skeleton. Now if it's anything like that build, then it's going to be a lot of fun. We think the ship looks great and is a good representation of the source material and it's brilliant that LEGO have been so quick to respond to the LEGO community wanting this ship. Now the Razor Crest is available now for pre-order from both Amazon and LEGO.com. Now you also know the drill, let us know your thoughts and feelings in the comments below on the Mandalorian Brickheads and Razor Crest. Do you like the minifigure version of Baby Yoda or do you prefer the Brickheads version? And finally, looking ahead to March from LEGO, you'll be finding minions everywhere, along with one of the strangest T-Rexes to grace the LEGO catalogue with the awesome looking Venomosaurus. LEGO gets steamy with its latest gift we purchased, train set number 40370, so look out for that from the 1st of March, which is when you can officially buy the new wearable dots. And looking ahead from London Bridge Bricks, we'll be taking a look at LEGO's new game, LEGO Legacy Heroes Unboxed, and we'll be bringing you new speed builds, chilled builds, and reviews of those official, fabulous LEGO magazines, along with LEGO halls and a new massive custom ATAT. We'll be continuing our fun transatlantic live streams with Brickhive, and watch out for a special international space station stream with our good friend Doc Sampson. This has been the LBB News for February 2020. Please do comment with your views and suggestions below. We always read them and we certainly always reply to them. We'll leave you now with some videos that we think you might like. Goodbye. <laughs>